All right, we've got some breaking news here on CBS Sports HQ. Justin Simmons and a four-year, $61 million deal with $35 million of that guaranteed. According to multiple reports, he was tagged for a second time this past offseason. They do get a long-term deal done. 27-year-old was tagged by John Elway in 2020. That Gary Payton there in 2021. And the... Tag initially would have him right under $14 million, but now we're talking about 15.3, which would make him the highest paid safety in the NFL in terms of AAV. All right, let's bring in our insider and senior writer, Jonathan Jones. JJ, what more can you tell us about this deal? Yeah, long time coming here for Justin Simmons and the Denver Broncos. Denver Broncos never wanted to let go of Justin Simmons. That's obviously why they tagged him for a second time, and he and his representation have been close uh, with the Broncos on a long-term deal despite the Broncos, of course, getting a new general manager in there in George Payton. They understood the Broncos did that, uh, you know, we got to strengthen really every phase of our entire team. Uh, but what we must do is keep our strength strong. And that is certainly at the free safety position with Justin Simmons. That's why they exercise the option on Von Miller uh, so that they can rush the passer with both Miller and Bradley Chubb. So this was, again, for Justin Simmons, a long time coming. We knew that he was going to reset the safety market uh, last year was Eddie Jackson, and then Buda Baker jumped over him. And now we see, uh, as we just showed on the graphic there, Justin Simmons getting up there. Now uh, you start looking out at the rest of the safety market. And Jamal Adams, whatever that deal gets done with the Seattle Seahawks in terms of average annual value, that one will then leapfrog the Justin Simmons deal. But for now, Justin Simmons, the king of the mountain among all NFL safeties, the highest uh, paid safety in NFL history. And again, with him being there, I'm sure Vic Fangio is certainly happy to, to have his guy locked in. J.J., what does this do for the Broncos as they try to get back to the postseason? And again, a, a very tough division that they have there in the AFC West. Yeah, very tough. They knew that they didn't want to, again, lose Justin Simmons, a guy who the, each of the past four years has increased his interception production from two to three to four to last year at five when he was named to the Pro Bowl in his first year under the franchise tag. Uh, he is one of their most consistent, most valuable defensive players, uh, and they knew that they wanted to keep him. Now, in free agency, they also went out and signed Ronald Darby, the corner, to a three-year $30 million deal, or at least a deal worth up to $30 million. Uh, they exercised Von Miller's option, as I alluded to earlier, but the Broncos cannot yet be done. They're going to have to, and they know this, they're going to add some competition for Drew Locke. They are monitoring the Deshaun Watson situation there in Houston. We'll make attempts, uh, if possible, at least as recently as several days ago before the, the civil lawsuits were filed against Deshaun Watson. We're planning to make a run at Deshaun Watson in terms of a trade. If that does not work out for the Denver Broncos, they will be bringing in some sort of competition for Drew Locke. Uh, I, am, I, I do not believe that they are going to feel comfortable with him as the week one starter uh, right now. So we're going to see how they address that situation, that position. But certainly with Justin Simmons back, they and Vic Fangio, of course, uh, with the seat a little bit hot going into 2021, certainly feel good about the back end of the defense. One more before I let you go. You talked about the quarterback position, but what about offensively other things? We know Philip Lindsay, obviously, in the news, uh, not returning out there to Denver. What else needs to be addressed on that side of the ball, in your opinion, there uh, as they get ready for the draft as well? Yeah, they rescinded the tender on Philip Lindsay because, frankly, he wasn't really the schematic fit that the Broncos wanted to go with moving forward, figured that he would be able to get paid elsewhere. So he is now an unrestricted free agency uh, and will be able to be scooped up by a team here very shortly. I, I, Tommy, I mean, I, I respect and understand the question. They, they have added to the offensive line a little bit. They could probably do that a little bit more. They've decided that they're going to go with the young guys there at wide receiver. Frankly, though, they just have to be better at quarterback. And I, we're going to see if that is a trade for Sam Darnold. Uh, we're going to see uh, what happens with Marcus Mariota, uh, who is very likely going to be released by the Raiders. Um, you know, Teddy Bridgewater in Carolina, if uh, a trade there may happen. Uh, but they, they really, they're, they're not going to contend for the playoffs with Drew Locke. Uh, they understand that. And so they're trying to build the best team possible that they can at, while still addressing the quarterback situation. But at this point, it is imperative 
that they address the quarterback situation as quickly as possible. I hear you. Full agreement as well. Jonathan Jones there with the breaking news that Justin Simmons staying with the Denver Broncos long term after being tagged for a second time. JJ certainly appreciate it as always. And we'll be talking about on Big Six Podcast with Host Will Brinson and the Super Friends. Make sure you download and subscribe. Leave a five-star review today. Want a sports network that delivers everything that matters about the game? The highlights, the picks, the instant analysis. No yelling, no fake debates, no politics. Hit the subscribe button and never miss a moment.